he basically vanished and nobody knew where he went. And they never found his body. They never found. They, they, end, up they end up finding, finding his bones. His bones. In the it same was, spot that they claim they've been searched. Yeah. Hey, family, and welcome back to another episode. Y'all, we are doing true crimes. We're doing story times. We're having game nights. We're having all that good stuff. With my husband, as y'all know, he is finally coming in front of the camera. So y'all will definitely be seeing more of his face. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. Let us know how y'all are doing. Yep. So today we are bringing y'all an episode from Murder Under the Friday, the Friday Night, 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 Night Light. Yep. Episode 2. Um, this young boy's name is Tom Brown. Um, he basically vanished and nobody knew where he went and they never found his body they never found they, they, end, up they end up finding, finding his bones his bones in the it same was, spot that they claim they've been searched yeah so that ain't it is it right like <laughs> like nah that ain't that ain't gonna cut it for me yeah for like, sure y'all claim y'all searched all this that ain't gonna do it right so basically tom brown was this high school football player y'all in texas um in texas won three national championships three state championships at the dallas cowboys stadium for sure he was a beast i mean he played offensive line could nobody get around him and uh i think they had got out of school early or they was it was thanksgiving break it was thanksgiving break mm -hmm. yep so, so they, they had got out of school. school and uh they had his cousin had came in town to kick it with him and all that and chill with him. Mm -hmm. So he had told him, though, that, like, hey, he was glad to be out of school. They were just going to go joyride around him and a couple of schoolmates, mm -hmm. things like that. They're just going to go ride around town, listen to music, things like that. Which was like normal. That. This yeah, was, normal, was normal, you know, for high school kids. They, you know, get their friends and they'll ride around, listen to music, you know, and just drive around and enjoy each other's company. So mm -hmm. that was normal for them. And this was in a small town named Canadian, Texas. I mm -hmm. believe it's yeah. right up past Dallas and Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. Real small town. Football pretty much ruled the whole Ruled the whole little town. That's right. all they had to get them together. Like everybody football. Knew everybody knew everybody. Yeah, everybody knew everybody. And they was, so they all decided to park at the middle school parking lot. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody got in the car with Tom Brown. Mm -hmm. And they was just riding around. They said, I mean, they got the, the kids that was with him now say that he was as happy as he's ever been. Mm -hmm. Like he was, j jokes was just rolling off his tongue. Mm -hmm. He was just. He was, I mean, he was upbeat. Wasn't nothing going on. Wasn't nothing suspicious. He wasn't sad or anything. None you know, that. he was, he was his self, you know. Um, he did have a curfew. So his curfew came around and Curfew mom, was at 12 and uh -huh. he didn't show up at home. And he his mom was like, home. that wasn't normal. So she said he normally would always be home by curfew, but he didn't show up this day. By mm -hmm. curfew, he just, mom didn't receive no messages. He just, no he, calls, didn't, he no didn't show nothing. up at home. Yeah. So she called him, called him, called him, wouldn't answer, sent him text messages, things like that. So the next thing she proceeded to do was to call the friends he was with. She knew him. I mean, they all, everybody knew everybody. So yeah. she called him and like, hey, have y'all seen Tom? He, has, he he hasn't made it home, things like that. And they said, yeah, we, he dropped us off at our car and we. They were in the bed sleep. Yeah, they, at, this yeah, they, at this point they, they was in the, in the bed, bed sleep. Everybody supposedly thought everybody made it home. Right. So she called the people that he was with. Have y'all seen Tom Brown? Was the question for her? That was her child. And uh, they basically said no. Nah. I mean, he was fine. He dropped us off to our car. He said he was coming straight home. He should have been home. Right. So I mean, he didn't make it home. Okay. And from there, the brother decided to. Um, he had an older brother. His brother decided to go out and look for him because he was thinking maybe, you know, his phone was on silent or maybe his phone died and he don't know what time it is. Mm -hmm. So he was just going to ride around and look for him. Um, he did do a little driving around and Unfortunately. didn't see him. He didn't find him. So he went back home. Um, at the point, at this point, you know, they're worried. They're worried sick because this isn't like him. Never. He never missed curfew. He's right. always at home. Um, the next day they did end up finding... His car, mm -hmm. um, and he wasn't in it. However, they did find a speck of blood in his car, as well as a bullet mm -hmm. in his car. So now they're they know you know something isn't right. Um, but they, they but they acting like everything him. was normal because right. it was the detectives that was the assigned to the case. The uh, sheriff. The sheriff. Mm -hmm. He was the sheriff of the time. He was a new sheriff. He had only been on the job for like six months, and um. The sheriff went to high school with 
Tom Brown, the mother, father. So with Tom's grandpa. Yeah, with Tom's grandpa. The sheriff went to, to school with the uh, with Tom's yeah. granddad, yeah. and he knew that um, Tom's granddad committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So when the mom went down, so I mean, after the first day, he didn't show up at home. They found this car the next day. Mm -hmm. So when they find this car, they find a. It's not bloody. They just found one speck of blood. Mm -hmm. They find one bullet, but they thinking, well, he didn't own a gun. Right. Where did this bullet come from? Well, maybe his friends. Maybe had a gun. Maybe that's what they was out doing, yeah, shooting right. gun, being high school kids, things like that. Well, they returned this car like right away. Two Soon day. as they find Two it, day. they returned it. They they claimed they searched after. it. They returned. It. They said we didn't need it no more. Tom mom was like, that's not right. Why like, didn't you impound this car? Like, yeah, if you like need any it for for you know for the investigation. Uh, yeah. Why would you return it home? I mean, we all know. I'm sure y'all know. If it's a missing person, we find his car. There's a bullet in it that we find a spent shell case mm -hmm. and it's blood. Well, you're going to keep, and we find this car like parked out in the middle of the woods. Like it's in the woods. Is it a, a area where he's not known to be and things like that, but they find it and they give it back right away. Pretty much. I mean, like as soon as they find it, they give it, they search it, claim they searched it, gave it right back. Well, the mom already knew like, Hey, this ain't right. Like right. this car is supposed to go into police custody because if you ever need to come back to this car for DNA, for evidence, anything like that, you're going to come search this car. Well, if you drop it off to me, DNA and evidence can be ruined. Right. So this car is not supposed to be in her possession, but she know that. So to make a long story short, she instantly like, hey, this ain't going right. Some ain't going right about this. So she and she's took previously it. had a run-in with the sheriff. Mm -hmm. um, so they basically already had like bad blood, mm -hmm. basically. Because they was out one night. He had, he was known to pick on Tom. So I don't know why this sheriff had a, I mean, a bone to pick with him and things like that. But he was known to pick on him. That's what that's what the mom said, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Because they were they were out one night at a, like a movie theater, but it was apartments on top uh -huh. of it. It was a small town, so they uh -huh. kind of like using all the space. Like it's a movie theater on the bottom, but it's like apartment lofts on top. Yeah, on top of it. And Tom and a few of his friends were hanging out there. Um, well, the sheriff pulled up, and he basically claimed that they were breaking in the movie theater. That was a that is what they were there to do was yeah. to break into the movie theater. Um, he put Tom in his car, and he was basically you know cussing at him and doing all this um, to Tom. He didn't call his mom or anything like that. Tom ended up telling his mom, and his mom was asking him, well, you know, is that really what y'all were mm -hmm. doing? Like, why were y'all, you know, out there? And he proceeded to tell her, like, no, my friends stay yeah. above the, you know, we theaters. Were there visiting we were just him. there, you know, basically kicking it, you know, with some friends. We weren't breaking into the movie theaters or anything like that. So from that day on, the mom knew, okay, hey, this sheriff, you know, is basically Got a problem with my son. picking. Okay, so, so they had bad blood prior to. So at this point, they. He's been missing for a couple of days. They find his car. They give the car right back. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, they don't have no more information for Tom's mom. So she take it into her. She take she take matters into her hands. So she go down there to the sheriff's office and she say, "Hey, what's going on with my son? Like, hey, y'all not doing? Basically, y'all need to speed this process up. We got a right. missing person, and everybody know if you watch Discovery ID, if you if you know anything about a missing person, the first." 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours is critical. Like right, we crucial. like those mm -hmm. are the moments where they can get real ahead of the police. You can be on the other side of the world or you got a chance of finding them alive. Right. So basically, she went down there to talk to him and the first thing this sheriff tell this woman is what? He probably committed suicide like your daddy. And she so was he like, told her that. He told her that. He told her that Tom probably committed suicide. Like your daddy. Because her dad committed suicide. That's ridiculous. She was mind blown. Like she basically took that as a slap in the face. You telling me that my son been missing for this many days. You find one bullet. You don't know where my son is. And the first thing, you, you haven't even, a couple days, you haven't even had time to do a thorough investigation. And you right. telling me, hey, he probably committed suicide because right. your daddy committed suicide. Right. Which is crazy. I mean, that, and then she went. She took that. You know, she knew that. She took he that was, with a grain of salt. Right. Like basically, that's a slap in my face. Like, how can you associate that with my son? So now she already know. Like, he's not working hard on my son. Murder. Either he hiding some, mm -hmm. or he not trying hard enough. Right. Or may, yeah. So basically, she, she felt like into her yeah, own and, hand, she and she hired a private investigator. She got on the internet. Yes. 
she hired, she said she did some Google searching and she found the number one private investigator in Texas. Mm -hmm. She called this man. She wrote him a letter first and she said, the guy explained it that she said, can you please, 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 please help me find my son. I'm mm -hmm. in a little town called Canada, Texas. Basically, they, they, they ain't working hard enough on it, and my and son gave is missing. him the rundown gave on what was going on. Right? That private investigator said, Tom, mom, um, that lady had him with the first plea. Yeah. If she didn't have no money or anything like that, she, he was going to help her find her son. So he loaded up his all his material and thing, and he went down to count of the text. He talked with her, and he said when she told him that, hey, they returned my son car as soon as they found it a couple of days later, he automatically knew right then that ain't right. So, right. He went down to the police station and introduced himself that, hey, I'm such and such. I'm a private investigator, and I'm here to solve the Tom Brown case. He told him exactly just like that. Y'all ain't doing it. I'm here to solve it. Yeah. And he said he looked at him like, like who right. is you? Like, you know what I'm saying? So. Well, the sheriff, they, he had been doing interviews on the radio station, mm -hmm. on the local radio station. Because everybody listened to the local radio. he was saying that they're doing everything that they can do, that they have uh, put together a search team, and mm -hmm. they have searched this specific area for Tom mm -hmm. and any of his belongings, um, that they were basically doing everything that they can do. Mm -hmm. Well, when this detective or a private investigator um, came, you know, onto the scene, he was like, okay, so where is the... Basically, search that y'all did, mm -hmm. and they couldn't produce they couldn't it provide because them. they never did. They one. never done them the um, whole time. And he been saying on the radio, "Hey, we be, we done searched this whole area where his car was found because obviously his car there. So you want right. to search that area thorough." Right. He said, "We've searched that whole area. We searched his car. The dogs hit the car. We did everything we could. He's nowhere to be found." So at this point, he put together his own search. Mm -hmm. So he took a search team out. And searched the same area where his car was, and guess what they find? Found his backpack. He said, "Well, well he the the he didn't specifically find the backpack. The sheriff claimed they found the backpack, and his laptops and books mm -hmm. and all that was in it. Mm -hmm. Well, that private investigator yeah, you wanted right. you right that because they asked for the backpack, and he said the police wouldn't let them get close to that. Wouldn't backpack. let him get close to the backpack." Yep. You're right. So he was like, at that point, he knew they were hiding something. Mm -hmm. He said, they were he said he told his, up. he said he told his team like, hey, we've been blocked by the cops. By the cops, yep, that's like, exactly what he said. So mm -hmm. now he know. He, at this point, they not even thinking. I'm a private investigator. I have access to the same things y'all have access to. We supposed to have one cause, help this lady find her son and solve right. this case. Right. But he was being blocked by the cops. Right. So at that point. He couldn't get the backpack. He said they wouldn't let them close to that backpack. Mm -hmm. So what he proceeded to do at this point, they gave the truck right back to the mom. So he said, we're going to go search the truck. So he got dogs and things like that. He said his dogs is trained to only hit on dead body scent. Mm -hmm. He said when he took them dogs to that car, they hit all, all over that car. car. All so all at that point, car. he said he knew it was 100% sure that a dead, dead body, body had been in, in that car. car at some point. Yep. He said a dead body had been in that car at some point. Mind you, the cop that, the sheriff that's on this case, that's claimed they've been doing thorough checks, who claimed they checked his truck, top and bottom, the one who's blocking them from getting his backpack is the same one that jacked him up, said, we, you've mm -hmm. been breaking into this theater and mm -hmm. you didn't do it. Cussing at him. And it's the same one that told this lady, hey, he might have committed suicide like your daddy did. So now we know he not trying. And he said he searched his truck. But now we search it and... He know that a dead body has been in this in truck. Car. And another thing that kind of, you know, threw a wrench in this case was as the private investigator put his own search team together, they end up running across Tom's cell phone. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, after they, they had already the searched phone, that area. Right, they had already as, searched after it. After the chef claimed they had already searched, searched that, that area. area. Right. So they run across the cell phone, but at this point, it's what, a year later? Yeah, or it's, it's way It's way later. down it's the way line. Later. You know? And it was an iPhone. Uh-huh. And he said, was wrong had been with the phone. he said, weather the day that they found it, it was rainy outside, muddy and everything. They found this phone in the same area. Mind you, the same area that they said they that they, they had searched, searched, where they found the backpack, where they found the truck. They find this cell phone a year later. It was a, it was a real long time later. The phone hadn't been touched. No, the phone no had damage, not been in no weather. water damage, he, no nothing. So it, it was like a new phone, said, like somebody was phone. sitting on top, like, you know, yeah. sitting on top of the grass, like Outside. nothing was wrong and with it. And it's a year later, so, I mean, even, I'm sure y'all would think, you think, I want to know in the comments, 
if you take an iPhone and place it outside for a whole year through all the weather, do you think I can come to this phone a year later, put it on a charger, and it fire right up? Nothing wrong, no no dirt, no mud, anything. No water damage, no nothing. What's Let it? us know what y'all think happened. I, feel, I think I somebody think, put the phone back too. out there. I feel like somebody planted that phone. Oh, it's just a whole lot of going on with this, with this, you know, true crime baby. It's too much. It's too much going on. You know, things being said that's really not being done. Um, yeah, it's just a whole lot. And later on, lot. so make a long story short, they never found Tom's actual body. They mm -hmm. end up finding bones. Three years later. Three years later in the same area where his truck, where his cell phone, and where his backpack was found they end up finding his bones out here mm -hmm. so the private investigator at this point also feel like if we didn't find them and y'all didn't find them then somebody placed these bones back out here and then the the crazy thing was you know they feel like and, and it went up it wasn't only the private investigator at this yeah, point it went up i all think the, the fbi Rangers, and, yeah all that. everybody you know had you know, joined in to figure out what happened to Tom. But nobody was they going hard as the, as the private investigator. Right. And the private investigator, I mean, y'all can go watch this series. It's on um, Murder Under the Friday Night Lights. It's season two. It's called Where's Tom? I'll link it down in the um description below. Mm -hmm. But um, he even said, like, hey, I'm not here. If you ask me today, I'm. do I feel like everybody was hide anything or going as hard as they should have been. He said he wasn't there. He said he's not in the business to say the U.S. Marshals hide information from Texans. He said he's not in the business to say the FBI is hiding information and, and doing crooked things. But mm -hmm. he also said he here to be honest and that it was a whole lot of knobs left unturned in that case and it was mm -hmm. a lot of untruthful information being put out. So to make a long story this short, was a sad case, yeah, they she never, never found. She still like right to this day, she still don't have justice she for her son. Know what happened to her son? But she can confirm that he's dead. They found bones that DNA yeah. checked out that they was Tom Brown bone. He was a high school football stud, played on the offensive line, won three state championships right there at Dallas at AT and T Stadium. Like this case was pretty new. Like this case yeah. here was like only a couple years ago. And they did say y'all like um. The National, what is it, Security or National, National Guard. Guard or whatever, um, did look into the sheriff. Mm -hmm. They were looking more into the sheriff, and they they found that he was been, covering up yep. information. He has been untrue. So they actually went back to the station, and the National Guard is here at this point now asking for, hey, if y'all done these searches, they should be on file. Give right. them to me. So they said right. that um, they end up finding out that he was being untruthful about a lot of the searches he claimed that they had did. They didn't have on file that they should have been that they done these searches. So a lot of these searches he claimed they done. He was covering never up took information. Place. Um, he was untruthful about the people. He was putting people in like, hey, they was asking who searched this place. Right. And it's up to him to know who he sent out there. So he was being untruthful about who he docked that went out and actually did the search. Right. The searches never took place. Like, let's just be honest. Right. They, they never took place. And... Not long after that, y'all, he, he, he resigned. He ended up resigned. He ended up just quitting. So, which I, I, I mean, deep in my soul, watching this episode, I just it give me chill bumps now because I know he had something, something to do with that. To do with that, that I baby feel like, death, like I feel like he followed them around that night. He knew Tom Truck because he had been picking on him. I feel like he followed them around that night. He waited till he dropped the mother kids off. He pulled Tom Brown over, and at that point, I don't know what happened, but. Foul play happened right then. Definitely. That's if when it happened. If he didn't do it himself, he, he knows exactly somebody to do what it. happened. He know he know what it happened. It was just too much going on. You you're covering up stuff. You're lying about and stuff. I feel, it's just I honestly feel like if I'm a sheriff over a, a little small town, I'm head of a murder investigation. If the National Guard come in and prove that I was untrue, I was being untruthful about actually working on a murder case to where it points that it looked like I'm I'm suspicious. I feel like a case should be opened up on him. I do too. I don't know if that can happen. Y'all can I let us know. Y'all can let us know down below. But I feel like action should be taken on him because murder don't have a statute of limitations. So we can come That's back right. 30 years later and say, hey, I mean, I watch cold cases all the time where, I mean, it, a cop, I watch, we can say that for another episode, but I'm going to yeah. tell y'all, I watch a cold case to where a cop 
reported that he found a dead body and this cop was like 26 at the time and they end up solving this case and going to arrest this cop when he was like 75 years old mm -hmm. on an oxygen machine. Mm -hmm. They end up finding a boot print that matched the cop the city cops wore only people wore these kind of boots and that's how they traced it back but we'll give y'all more information on that yeah that's another okay. episode but do y'all think me. do y'all think that um do y'all think the sheriff was crooked do y'all think he had anything, anything to do with some disappearing? i do i do deep I down do. in my soul i feel like he had i really want to say i know i know and right? we stay in texas so and right. that's like two hours from us so and i got kids that's, that's crazy. gonna go to school I got kids that's gonna drive and joyride these Texas streets right. when they're in high school. Right, just home though, yeah. like you know. And she never got justice for her baby. Like she don't know what happened to him. Still don't know. So that's that's the crazy part and the sad part about it. But yeah, y'all, let us know down below if y'all are feeling this con this type of content. Um, we'll definitely be bringing more to you guys. We're gonna try to bring at least two to three videos a week. Um, don't quote me on it though, you know, but quote we're gonna on. try. <laughs> um, but yeah, we hope y'all like this type of stuff. We will definitely be back with more episodes. We love y'all. Peace, love, and happiness. And we'll see y'all in the next one.